Um, I told Johnny, guy, uh, Johnny's going to be doing some stuff with Home Recording Made Easy. Johnny, I told him all about that. I don't know how long you've been kind of sitting there listening. Um, but Johnny, uh, I'm glad to see Johnny Guy on my live stream. It's probably one of the first live streams that he's actually joined, which is really cool. Which is really cool. So what else is going on? We got uh, six, 64 people now here. Really cool. Johnny was here. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that's great. Okay, cool, man. Yes, now the celebrity roast of Johnny Guy can begin. Excellent. You guys can pick on him for a while and ignore me. That would be perfect. That would be great. So, you guys want to see something in Studio One? I know someone asked that. I know. You don't want to hear me talk. What the hell do I? What are you going to hear me talk for? So, let's see if we can get, Now, again, uh, if John, I know uh, Johnny Guy, uh, we, we had a YouTube crash a little while ago, and we had to restart things. So, who the hell knows how long this is going to work? However, we're going to try to bring up... Let's see if we can bring up the screenshot here for a second. Let's see what we can do. Now you guys should, well, you're probably seeing my Wirecast screen, of course. So now you should all be seeing Studio One, yes? You should all be seeing Studio One. Perry says, let's do it. Cool. Yeah, we're going to, uh, let's see. Hello, I have a question. I found a mistake in my VST drum track that when I bounce to Studio One, I can go back and fix the error and re-record it, but how can I do that? You know, that's a good question for Johnny Guy or Johnny Lipsham. They'll be able to answer that question. Yes, yes, you guys can all see Studio One. Lovely. All right. Yeah, you could see it. God only knows whether you're going to hear it or not. <laughs> we're going to find out in a second. So let's see. Let's see how this works now because we're doing things a little different through Wirecast this time around. So let me just play something back, and you all let me know whether you can hear this or not. You might be able to hear it. You might not be able to hear it. We're going to find out in a second. Let me move my Wirecast out of the way. I should get three screens. That's what I need. I need another monitor. Yeah, let's play this back for a second. You guys hear that okay? Just give me a yes or no or maybe so. And I'll shrink my Wirecast screen so I don't have to keep looking at this. Um, and I'll probably go to... Uh, Let's go to maybe, uh, what shot do we want to go to? Probably shot number, oh, I don't know. Let's try uh, this one, maybe. Nope, not that one. Maybe that one. Maybe that one, so you can see a studio live there. So can you guys, could you guys hear uh, Studio One there? Let me just get rid of Wirecast here for a second. I need like seven screens like Johnny Guy has. Johnny Guy has like two monitors, an iPad, and everything else. Yeah, Johnny, you can hear everything? Cool, 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 cool. Okay, let me just turn up my headphones a little bit. Again, okay, we'll have to see what the levels are. Okay, so this is just a track that this is, uh, this. there's nothing been done to this. Absolutely zero as far as mixing goes. Okay, so we're going to have a little bit of clipping here and just, you know, because I got to set the levels for what's coming into Wirecast. So as you can see, you should be able to see over in the... Um, in the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the screen, you should probably be able to see our Studio Live 32, and then you should be able to see Studio One on the screen, and that's what I see. See? I can, uh, I can see all the faders. All right. So let's start off with what we got kind of rolling here. This is kind of a, I don't know, like an indie kind of a pop track maybe. Uh, all our drums are down here in brown. We're not going to mix the whole song tonight, guys, that's for sure, but we're all down here in brown. We have a kick, snare top, snare bottom, hats, toms, one, two overheads room mics one and two um, we have a bass di and we have a bass amp over in blue and then we also have some guitars we have four guitar tracks no five guitar tracks one being a lead guitar over in kind of this light lime green color and then we have um lead vocals one and two and then we have five sets of background vocals so we have a 24 track um rigmarole going on here okay so now some people are gonna are gonna want to know how is this all being routed down to the studio live because everything is coming through on the faders i have everything coming through on all 24 faders here um channel one disregard because that's my vocal mic here and it's just because of the way wirecast picks up this broadcast so everything is kind of starting from channel two down so you can see down here in the way I've kind of labeled things the kick starts with the kick in is not on channel one it's on channel two so everything's going from channel two to channel 24 um, and that's kind of how 
everything is kind of being routed. Okay, now if I go to my inputs and my outputs, let, let me show you how I kind of have that set up so you can so you can route your audio through Studio One back to the Studio Live and use the mixer. Now, um, there is a YouTube video I did on this and I also posted it in the um, PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 Facebook group that I have as well. Um, I show this, what I'm about to show you now, but if you have not seen this video, this is kind of what you do. So the first thing you do is go into your preferences and you want to go into your IO, okay? And what we want to do here on the outputs, as you can see, we have um, channels two, we have, we have a mono outputs for channel two all the way down to channel 24 to represent each one of the tracks. Okay, so you have to, on the output side, you have to have, if you have 24 tracks, channels two through 24, you have to have an output set up for channels two through 24, which we do have here, okay, on the output side. Okay, and I didn't label them, I just said channel two, channel three, channel four, but channel two is the kick, channel three is the snare top, channel four is snare bottom, you get the idea. Okay. On the input side, we have my vocal mic here just so we can do this broadcast on channel one. And that's a wire cast thing. You don't need that when you're doing your setup. But then we have what's down here, what's called the print track. And a print track is assigned to on the Studio Live 32 to the assignable one and two, which is channel 37 and 38. Okay. And I'll show you what that means in a second. So you have to have a print track because what we're doing is we're bringing Studio One into uh, the Studio Live 32 mixing it with the faders, and then we're printing that mix back into Studio One. It's very similar to analog summing. If you've seen any of my analog summing videos in the past, it's the same kind of concept. You're bringing the audio from the DAW into a piece of hardware, in this case, the Studio Live 32, and then doing the mix and shooting it back into Studio One on a print track. You mix the song and then you play it in real time from top to bottom, and it will record that mix onto a track that I'm calling a print track. And then from there, you would solo up the print track and export it as an MP3 WAV file. Make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, ask in the chat. And when I get back to it, I'll certainly try to help. Okay, so that's our input and our output screen. The other thing you need to realize, on all the tracks on the Studio Live, on you have to hit the select button. And you want to make sure that from channel 2, okay, disregard channel 1, channel 2 to channel 24, on the input on the Studio Live, it has to be on USB. Okay, it can't be on analog. Channel one's on analog because that's my vocal mic, but channel two, all the way through channel 24 is all on the USB input. Okay, you have to do that. If you don't do that, you won't hear the audio. So when you set up your outputs in studio one in the IO screen, just like we showed, and then you use the input selector button, the red button, um, that will bring the audio for each one of the tracks back in on the tracks across the studio live, and then you can use your fader. Now you can see on the screen in front of you this red print track. This is my vocal mic going to the print track. But if I were to shut up and just play back the music, you'll see that all the audio is coming back from the studio live. I have all the faders up just kind of, at, you know, almost at unity. I just kind of threw them up. And if I were to just record this, if I were to put this into record enable and just hit play, watch what happens. If I turn down my vocal mic for a second or mute it, Okay, so what happens is, is it prints that mix, and again, we just threw up the faders, to Studio One on the print track, and that is the track that you would solo up, and you would set your start and end markers, right, at the beginning and end of the song, and then you would do your normal song uh, export mix down, and that would solo up the print track, and it would export that mix. Does that make sense to everybody? If you have not seen me do that before, that's why I wanted to kind of demonstrate how that kind of works, okay? Everybody kind of got that? Everyone knows it? What's going on in the chat? Blah, blah, blah. You guys are all talking amongst yourselves? Good, 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 good. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so that's what we're kind of doing. Okay, so if we were to, let's take a look at the, uh, let's just start off with listening to uh, the single track. So let's just, uh, let's see, let's do the. Let's mute everything except uh, let's start with like a kick drum or something and we'll just play around a little bit and see what's going on. 
So now the other thing you want to make sure you do is you want to make sure that you set all your faders in Studio One to Unity and use the faders on the Studio Live. Now mine's a little bit below Unity because these tracks were recorded really hot. And in order not to clip the Wirecast feed, I turned them down about 7 dB. But normally I would keep these at Unity and just use the faders on the Studio Live mixer. Okay, so that's why that's kind of the way it is right now if anyone wants to know. Okay, and as you can see, each track is routed to the output that we talked about earlier. So kick, uh, kick Out is on, <clears throat> excuse me, channel two. So if I were to solo that up, and I'll turn down all the rest of the faders here because you won't hear anything else. Just kind of loop a section here. Okay, so if I turn down the fader, there goes the kick. We can expand this and we can start, you know, messing around plugins, whatever we want to do. So let's just use some stock plugins. Why go crazy with third party stuff? We're not going to spend a lot of time mixing the whole song. So let's just kind of go through. Now, let's start off. So I think kind of really sounds kind of lousy. Let's see if we can get something uh, like a pro EQ up here. See if we can find the uh, mic placements. Not very good on this kick drum. Hopefully, you guys can hear this okay. I'll turn it up a little bit more. Let me know if you guys can actually hear this. It kind of sounds like crap because it was recorded like crap. But you know what? I got a fix for that. If you want, if you have a kick drum that sounds like this and you're mixing, you don't want to do this for two hours with an EQ, I'm going to show you a $40 plug-in that'll fix this so we don't have to do this. Okay, we don't have to mess around with all this and go, wow, this sounds like hell, right? Because it does. Okay, so we can mess around with that, but that isn't going to work for us. Now, you could replace it with, uh, with, a, with, a, with a sample, right? But we're going to do something even better now. I'm going to show you a, a plug-in what I've talked about before. Um, this is kind of like instant kick drum. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, it's by a company called Plugin Mix and is called the Clary Sonic. This will usually cure just about any lousy sounding low end frequency instrument, such as a kick drum that sounds like it's hitting a paper bag. We'll just use a factory preset. Let's see if we can get something out of this thing. And if we can't, we will go to a sample. Not much better. Even this doesn't fix this problem. So basically what happens on this is you have three knobs. You have a sub-level knob here, which gives all the real subsonic frequencies, the low-end frequency. You get a low focus knob and then you have a clarity knob which is kind of the slap and then you have a couple of sub modes and normally you can crank the sub level and it really kind of gets rid of that nastiness but even on even on this kick drum it doesn't work too well okay so what we're going to do is we're going to ditch that Man, it actually sounded a little bit better than that. And we're going to go to a replacement. This is where you would use a sample each and every time. Yeah, Johnny, we're not going to fix that with an EQ. Not with this. We're not going to fix this just lousy kick drum with an EQ and a channel strip. Not really. Um, but you know what? Because in, in, uh, in celebration of Johnny Guy joining my live stream for the first time... <laughs> We're gonna do, we're gonna do just that. You want to try it with an EQ and a channel strip? Let's see. Where's the PreSonus channel strip? Let's play with it. Because I would just reach for my Slate Digital, uh, what you call it, my uh, Trigger Two, and I would fix this in ten seconds. But let's say you don't have that. What can we do? Can we use a preset of some kind? Let's try. Ah, not really well. 
You know, the problem with this is the mic placement is horrendous on this. Yeah, it just sounds like crap, right? Not happening, Johnny. Not with this channel strip <laughs> or any channel strip. It's not pre-sonus. I don't. I don't mean to sound it like that. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a. We're gonna put. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get a slate digital trigger too. So if you don't have a drum sample um, replacement like trigger or drummer gog, this kick drum is the exact reason why you should have one. <laughs> you should have this. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go in and we're gonna pick a stock. It could be just a stock old any old one that just came with the system. Nothing fancy, nothing extra to buy. Then we're gonna adjust the detail here. So adjust some of the volume level. And now we can dress this up with a good old, just a good old fashioned EQ if we wanted, or I can show you um, the Clarisonic again, if you really want to take this to another place. So now you kind of get the feel for what a Clarisonic can do. And we can just use a stock. And if you want some more low focus, depending on what kind of kick drum you want. Much better, yes? So we went from this. To that. Let's go to snare. Snare is not too bad. How's the sound out there, guys? Let me see what's going on with the chat. Yeah, it sounds pretty good, right, Johnny? Not bad, right? Clarisonic. And oh, by the way, if you guys don't know this about Cla about plug and mix, um, here's a tip for you. So if you go out to the plug and mix, plug and mix, plug and mix uh, Facebook page, there used to be a time, and I think they still do this, that if you like their Facebook page, they will send you um, a free coupon to pick any one of their plugins. So you can get that $50 plugin for free. That's how I got mine. Um, if they don't make that offer anymore or offer that for you, um, again, I think it's 49 bucks that plugin, the Clarisonic. And I highly recommend it if you ever have problems with kick drums, that's a great plugin to have. So let's, uh, let's move on. Let's go over to the snare, see what we got. And you notice I'm not touching the faders in Studio One, it's all done off the Studio Live. So let's uh, let's just let's go back to stock plugins, shall we? Where is my Pro EQ? There it is. rid of that nasty ring. I'll bring a little bit of weight. There we go. That's where we started. We'll get there, Andy. We'll get there. 
a little better, yes? Let's go to the snare bottom. Blend those two snare drums together. How's the sound in there out there, guys? Hopefully you guys got good level out there. Go over to the hats and see what we got here. And let's make sure our panning is quite right here. Just making sure things are panned right. We're doing a drummer's perspective on this. So I got the hi-hat panned a little off uh, to the left. Actually, it's way off to the left. It shouldn't be that far off. Let's get to some hi-hat here. Don't like a lot of hi-hat in the mix. Got a lot of snare bleed in there, but that's natural. You notice how we haven't compressed a single thing yet, right? Hi Ian, uh, Ian, how are you? He just joined. Yeah, real faders are great, aren't they, Andy? It's really cool. I can't wait till this is a whole Studio One surface control. Let's go over to the overheads. And this time around, let's use the EQ on the uh, Studio Live. Okay, we're going to use the overheads, we're going to use the EQ on the Studio Live first. So we're going to hit the uh, input, <clears throat> we're going to go over to EQ, we're going to turn it on, be a good start. Let's see if we can roll off a little bit here around, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to go around, uh, around 100, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to roll it off too high. Here. 
So we're gonna roll off on the on the overhead around. I'm gonna stay around 85, 90. We're gonna we're gonna leave some low end in there just for a bit. And I know you can't see the screen up close, and I apologize for that, but we're gonna do some shaping here anyway. And I'll turn down the kick and the snares a little bit, just so you can hear mostly hi-hat. Or mostly overhead, excuse me, not hi-hat. So we're gonna try to get rid of that boxiness. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna give you just the overheads right now, so you're not hearing anything except for the overheads right this minute. Right around 500, we're gonna yank all that out. Or not all of it, but enough of it. at 9k so on the overhead mic we got to roll off at around 90 hertz we're pulling out the about 5 db at 500 and then we're putting a little bit of boost around uh two and a half db at 9k and that gets you this just the overhead mic and if i shut off the eq that's before. And that's after. Now let's blend the rest of the, the close mics back in. Without the overhead mic, with the overheads. Let's check out the rooms. I'm gonna pan these, the rooms. We'll start with left, we'll start with hard left and right, but we're just gonna take a look at the left room right now, room one. With uh, no overheads, no overheads, just the rooms. Let's go back to the, uh, let's go back to the Pro EQ. Check that out. Actually, you know what? We're going to use the Studio Live EQ. What the hell? We're here. So let's uh, channel nine. We're going to select that up. We're going to turn on the EQ. We're going to go to the input. I'm going to do a roll off here. And again, I'm not going to do a real high uh, low pass because I want to hear the room. I want to hear the kick drum. Maybe around 50 hertz or so because I want to hear the 60 hertz in the kick drum. I want the room to fill up a little bit, at least on this particular track. Okay, now we're gonna go over to the EQ. We're gonna get rid of that nasty 500 again, because I can hear it.
right there. 600 hertz. And then we're gonna widen that cue a little bit. I think that's it on this. Before the EQ, you can hear it gets a little hollow. And that's with the EQ. So that's the first room mic. I'm gonna do the same thing to the second room. I'm gonna pull that down, pull up the second room. Gonna select that channel. Oh, I got a panning. Well, why the hell is that thing panned? That's not supposed to be panned that way. Okay, now we're panned to the center as we should be. Okay. So now we're gonna do uh, again a roll off here, high pass filter, maybe around f about 50 hertz. We're gonna turn on the EQ. Go look for that nasty frequency. It's probably around the five six hundred mark. It's around uh, almost seven hundred on this one. Four. Hope you guys are hanging in with me. Sorry, I'm not paying attention to the chat, but I'll get back to it. Now let's blend the two room mics together. Again, no, there's no overheads right now. Overheads are muted. These are just close mic and rooms. There's the overheads. Pull the overheads down. Let's see if we pan the rooms a little bit just to see where we go with them. Maybe around 50% on each side just to see what that sounds like. So there's our two room mics. Here comes our overheads. How's it sounding out there? So far, so good. Now let's let's bring this all to a bus, and let's um let's put a little compression on it. We'll just do some bus compression this time around. So, as a kind of a recap, what we've done here, we've used the Pro EQ um, on the um, snare top and bottom and the hats. We haven't done the toms yet because there's really no tom fills all that much in this song. The kick has got the uh, trigger too because the kick sounded like ass. We all agreed, I think. And we used Clarisonic uh, by Plugin Mix to kind of get the kick drum sounds. And now on the um, overheads and the rooms, we used the EQ on the Studio Live 32, which is uh, sounding pretty good. At least it is in my cans in here. Don't know what it sounds like over YouTube. God only knows what it sounds like over YouTube, but trust me, it sounds pretty good here. So now we're going to highlight all the tracks. We're going to right click and we are going to go to a bus channel. We're going to throw a compressor on here. And why don't you guys tell me what compressor do you want to use? Let's see, we have stock compressors, but that wouldn't be fun if we just used a stock compressor. Or we could use, um, let's see. What we oh, I should have probably routed everything the way I was supposed to. Let me remove that and do that again. Johnny Gibbs probably going, what the hell did you do, Dave? You didn't pick the right one. Selected channels. Now we got, now we know what we're doing, right? <laughs> okay, so what compressor are we gonna use? We can use a stock compressor. We can use anything by Universal Audio. We can use Slate Digital Compressors. Andy wants to use the vintage compressor. We're gonna use a plugin. What do you wanna use, something vintage? Do you wanna use like a Slate Digital, like an SSL compressor? That's usually uh, something that sounds really good on drums. 
Yeah, Johnny says it's YouTube on mono. You're right. It probably is. And that has probably something to do with YouTube and Wirecast. So you're not going to hear all the panning and such. Um, yeah, I realized that. Sorry about that. Sounding okay, though, even though it's in mono. Robert wants to use the waves. And he wants to use the red, the focus right, the red. Okay, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put a couple on. Let's do a little compressor comparison, shall we? Let's start with the stock compressor, and then we'll move over to a slate digital. And we'll throw universal audio, and we'll toggle on and off, on and off, on and off. And you guys can tell what do you guys like better, even though it sounds like it's mono. And it is. But let's start with the stock compressor by uh, good old PreSonus, okay? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to start, I'm going to do about a two to one ratio. Typically what I do on buses, real low ratio. Again, I don't want to over compress everything, even though we're not really compressing on any of the individual channels. In an effort to kind of speed this up, I would normally compress lightly on every one of the channels. But for this demonstration, let's just do a bus compressor. We'll do a two to one ratio. We're going to do kind of a medium attack and kind of a, we'll start with a medium release. Let's see where we go. Gonna do about four dB of compression, give or take. We'll turn up the makeup gain about three, four dB. So four. It's after. Okay, so if you can't hear this over YouTube, what I'm hearing is that you're getting, uh, you're going to get some, um, the, the symbols and everything are going to kind of pull forward. Everything kind of lifts up a little bit in the mix. It's compressing and pulling everything forward is what it should do. I know I lost my, I know my camera now is sitting uh, away from the Studio Live 32 because we're doing stuff with plugins now. So you should see me uh, down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So that's the PreSonus compressor. Okay, everything sounding okay still? Uh, let's see. What do we got? What's going on? Gone, gone. Okay. Everything is looking good. Everything's looking good. Andy wants to see the red. Okay. Let's go to, let's go to slate digital and let's put a slate digital on it. We're going to turn off the PreSonus one. Now let's go to slate digital. Let's get a couple of theirs. Andy wanted to see the red, right? Andy, we'll put on the FG red just for you. By the way, if you have slate digital and you don't have the virtual bus crap, Virtual bus compressor collection, you should. This is one of those compressors in that collection is the FG Red. It's the emulation of the Focusrite um, compressor, which is um, Chris Lord Alge uses this an awful lot. This has got a lot of great harmonic distortion stuff. So we're not going to do anything with a preset. We've got the threshold over here in the top left-hand corner, the ratio, attack, and release. We're going to do a two-to-one ratio again, even though we could probably do a little, a little bit more just because we're not compressing on the other tracks. But we're going to do kind of a medium style, medium towards fast attack. We're going to do kind of a little bit of a faster release to start. And we're going to have take this thing here called the drive knob. This is where we're going to get some of that coloration. We're going to push it a little bit and play with it. Now, what's great about this compressor um, is it has a high pass filter. So if you don't want the low end, like say the kick drum to affect the way the compressor is compressing, you can turn this up. So let's say you wanted to set this to like, you know, say 60 or 70 hertz and anything that or below is not going to affect the way the compressor compresses. I don't like to set it too high because I want the kick drum to squeeze the compressor a little bit, especially a compressor like this. So I'm going to set this somewhere around, you know, 30 hertz. The mix is at 100%, and then we have the makeup gain here, which is at zero. So let's start with it and see what we get. Turn up our threshold a little bit. And try to achieve about the same amount of compression as before. We'll turn up the makeup gain to compensate. Let it loop around.
as before. After. Hear the difference there? So you get a lot more coloration than as compared to the PreSonus compressor. But if we press, if we push the drive knob or the drive dial a little bit more, this is what that kind of does. Hopefully you'll hear it over YouTube. Before, after. Okay, so you get a lot, hopefully you can hear it over YouTube again. I don't know what you're hearing, but what I'm hearing here is a lot more coloration, a little bit more grit, and that grit is coming from this drive knob. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's where the grit is coming from. And it just gives it, so it's just a different character. You know, it's not better or worse than the stock plugin. It's just different. Okay. So that's the FG red. Now let's, what if we did the FG gray, which is one of my favorite ones. This is another slate digital one. This is the SSL emulation. Again, it's laid out very similar. We have attack release threshold ratio. Again, we'll set it to two to one. Um, we'll do kind of a fast release and kind of a medium fast attack. We have the high pass filter option. Again, we could turn that up to about 30 Hertz or so. 100% wet and we have a makeup gain and we'll go ahead and we'll just uh, futz around with the uh, threshold and see what we got. Oh, the video paused. Hopefully the video didn't pause. If that's a YouTube thing again, that wouldn't surprise me. So anyway, let's try it. Let's see. Play around with the threshold. That's before. That's after. So the FG Gray adds a ton of coloration. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear it here. Um, so the FG, FG Gray is one of my favorites for drum, drum bus compression. I tend to pull this a lot of times. Um, is there anything else that you got? Any other compressors you guys want to see? Well, now we can put them all on the screen and flip back and forth. So we use the PreSonus stock compressor. We use the uh, Slate Digital FG Red, the Focusrite, and then we also use the FG Gray. Um, we can try something else if you guys want to see something else or you just want to flip back and forth between those three because those three are pretty cool. What do you guys think? We could put all these on the screen. We could pin them. And we could turn on this one and this one. And let's put on the FG, the uh, focus right red. And then we could put on the, um, the PreSonus one as well. Put that one right in the middle. So we kind of have three, a, th a threesome of compressors here. Okay. So we're going to bypass. We're just going to bypass the, the, the stock plugin and we're going to bypass the FG red and we're just going to listen to the SSL. The one I'll do is I'll just bypass the SSL, go to the PreSonus bypass, go to the FG uh, red and see if you guys can hear the difference. Um, and uh, what I'll do is I'll try to level match them so they sound about the same volume as we're going through. This is the F. This is the uh, FG Gray again. Go go to the stock compressor. This is the PreSonus compressor, the one in the middle here. Go to the FG Red. Back 
back to the presonus. We'll let it loop around again and we'll go to the FG Grey. FG Grey. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can hear the difference here. There's the FG Gray, the PreSonus stock compressor, and then the FG Red, both uh, by Slate Digital, the jig, the gray, and the red. What's going on in the chat? I've been ignoring the chat. Let's get back to the chat here. Let's see what's going on. Uh, we are hearing in mono. Yes, YouTube is is over in mono, and that and that's true. So some of the panning you're not going to hear, but hopefully you can hear the compression. Uh, the gray uh, gets it. Yes, I like the gray too as well, Andy. Uh, let's see. Ernie says, uh, I can't tell the difference. Um, okay. Maybe again, I'm not sure. Oh, here's another thing too. If you're not, if you're not listening to these audio examples on a decent set of studio monitors or headphones, you're not going to hear the difference. So if you're listening to it on a tablet or an iPhone or something like that, and I'm not saying that's what you're doing, Ernie, I'm just, you, that just raises that uh, thing for me to mention. If you're listening to it on a real inexpensive cheap set of speakers or earbuds or something like that, you're not going to hear the difference in the compression. And over YouTube, it's a little difficult to hear anyway because YouTube also compresses things as well. So, but there is a little difference. So no, Ernie, you don't need your ears examined. Um, I don't know. It also just can be you're not used to uh, listening for compression or again, I don't know what your experience level is. So I'm not trying to... Um, insult you in any way but if you're someone who is um new to listening for compression that's okay these are subtle differences i'll tell you they're not wildly different and so if um if you're not used to picking out those little nuances over youtube i'm not a great set of speakers you may not hear the difference um, but what i hear here just to give you my opinion who's sitting here in the room listening um is that the um all the compressors obviously compress and they, and they do a good job. The stock compressor uh, sounds fine. Um, there's no coloration, obviously, and it sounds a little more clinical, but what the PreSonus compressor does very well is it does compress well and it does bring up the snare and it gives a little bit more crispness to the hi-hat and the cymbals. So it kind of squeezes everything together and pushes it a little forward in the mix. It sounds great, um, but it's kind of sterile sounding. It's transparent is the better word for it, not sterile. Uh, sterile has a negative connotation. I don't mean to say that. It's a, it's more of a, it's more, um, it's more transparent. Um, the FG Red by Slate Digital, um, that has a much more coloration to it, especially with the drive knob. It gets almost a little bit of distortion, a little bit of, a um, little bit of crispiness on the snare there. It also compresses and pulls everything together, but it has a little bit more grit using the drive button. The uh, S, uh, SSL version, the FG Gray, has that same kind of coloration, but without the grit, because it doesn't have the drive feature. And again, I'm only compressing about three to four dB on each one of these compressors and kind of level matching the plug-in with the output makeup gain. So they are different from each other but they're not wildly different. They're subtly different, okay? So I hope that uh, clears that up for anybody. Uh, let's see, yes, I know YouTube sucks, it's mono. Some of these things I can't, I, um, uh, you know, I can't, I can't fix, <laughs> I can't, I can't, uh, I can't fix that, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, Andy says, listening to the snare and a high end really brightens it up. Yeah, and, and on the snare I'm using the, um, I was using just a regular PreSonus EQ, just a little bit of top end, rolled off some low end and give it a little bit more at around 150 to give it a little bit more weight. Yes, Johnny Guy's saying that the plugins are supposed to be colored, I'm sure. Yes, if you mean the Slate Digital ones, absolutely. Any of the vintage style emulations are supposed to sound colored. They're supposed to have that. that and if that's what you're going for, that's why you would use them. If you're going for more of a transparent, more of a cleaner, cleaner, again, I, cleans, I, I don't know if that's the right word, but more of a transparent sound, um, which is not a bad thing, by the way, then you wouldn't use, in this example, something like the Slate Digital plugins. You would use more of a stock plugin, or you would use like FabFilter makes a really good set of plugins, but they're a lot more transparent sounding. So it really depends on what, your, what sound you're going for is really what it comes down to. Um, there's nothing wrong with either one of them. It's just, what do you like? You know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of our little bit, comp our little compressor thing. 
um, I thought that you guys might find cool. And on the overheads and on the room mics, we use the EQ on the um, on the Studio Live 32, and I just used the standard EQ. I didn't use the vintage EQs at all, and I didn't use the compressors uh, either um, on the um, on the Studio Live 32 in this example. And as you guys saw, the only compression that we did use was just on the bus. We didn't really do any compression on any of the other drums, just to kind of save time. Um, so I don't know. I hope you found that that was that was pretty cool. Maybe we could go on. Just do. Let's just do the bass amp. Let's just play with some bass. So we don't have to hear drums the whole time, right? Why don't we do that? And then we'll uh, then we'll take some questions and see what you guys got going on. So now we got some bass happening. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll do everything on the Studio Live 32. So we'll go ahead, we'll select this channel. Oh, I should probably uh, pull up the, uh, the different camera shot for you guys here. Oh, hold on a second. Let's uh, let's let's do something different here. Hold on one minute. Let's uh, let's get back to our. Let me give you a different shot so you can see the Studio Live 32 because I know that's what you guys want to see anyway. You don't want to see my ugly face, do you? Of course you don't. Why would you want to see that, right? So let's go over to this shot. Let's go to this shot. Let's go to this shot. How about this shot? Hey, that's the shot that you guys probably want to see. Yes. Um, so let's let's do everything on the Studio Live 32 for the bass guitar, shall we? Let me get Wirecast out of the way. Use the vintage compressor and EQ on the on the. Okay, sure, Andy. Let's do that. I'll do that for you. I'll do anything for you, Andy. No problem. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do the bass. Let's just fool around with it. All right. So now, select input. We're going to do EQ first, then we're going to compress. So let's go over to EQ, and let's pick a different EQ. We're going to take the pull tech style EQ, the passive EQ on this. How's that, Andy? Is that pretty good? A tool, a tube based? Uh, so, hey, Pete Wojo from MixBetterNow.com and my partner in crime is here. Peter, how are you, my friend? Everybody in the chat room, say hello to Pete Wojo. Pete Wojo is all about learning to mix.com. We did a 30-minute spiel before, Pete. I'm not going to repeat myself. They all heard all about learning to mix.com and everybody is super excited, right? Right, guys? And if you're not super excited, just tell Pete you're super excited and make him feel good, would you? <laughs> So, Andy, we're going to use the pull tech on this bass just because, you know, what the hell, right? So let's do that. And I know you can't see the little screen, so you're just going to have to trust me what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go over to 100 hertz on the pull tech, and we're going to boost it a little bit just to see what we get. boost there it's pretty cool that's a lot of boost way too much boost right now let's go over to the uh, around a so uh, let's see maybe, maybe around Play around with the high frequency a little bit. Let me get. I turn the bandwidth up. Get a little bit of a wider cue. That's before. Four EQ right here. And that's after. It gets a little bit more weight, a little bit more meat. Now we're going to go over and we're going to do a little bit of compression. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Go back. EQ, there we are. Okay, for a compressor, 
For the compressor, Andy, we're going to use the LA two way. Is that cool with you? Seeing as you're you're picking it, you're cool with it, Andy, right? We're going an LA two on base, cause why wouldn't you use an LA two way? You should use an LA two. No, I shouldn't say that. I'm just joking. You don't shouldn't use anything on anything. But I like using LA two ways on base. They sound really good. So anyway, let's go ahead. Let's dial it in. So let's uh, do a little bit of peak reduction here. Let's do about five dB of uh, compression here. Let's kind of push this a little bit and see what we can get. One thing I noticed, the one thing I noticed about on the LA-2A on this Studio Live 32 is the knobs, the, the encoders are extremely sensitive. Just a tweak goes from no compression to 12 dB of compression. We're barely even touching it. So it's a little, um, little getting used to. And the other thing I noticed for you studio, your studio series three, 32 or 24, 16 board users on the, um, on the LA two, as I said, the encoders are really sensitive. And the other thing I noticed is that the, the needle on the plug-in, the compression that it kind of tells you you're getting and the actual gain reduction led on the board itself is way different. So the plugins telling me I'm getting about three to four DB and the, and the compressor, the LEDs, on the board down here, if you can see where my finger is, I'll move my hand out of the way, over here saying I'm getting like 12 dB of compression. Okay, so they don't match, which is kind of weird. So you should be using your ears anyway, but just so if any of you have the same board and you're experiencing that, I'm experiencing the same thing. So just be aware of that. So I, I like to just use my ears as opposed to looking at two different things that are telling me I'm getting two different ranges of compression. Turn up some makeup gain to make up the difference. That's before compression. After. Before. So the LA-2, even though the needle, I think, as far as how much compression we're getting is not quite accurate, but it really warms up that base a lot and it rounds it off. Um, and that is what an LA-2 or an LA-2A um, is really well known for in bass. Because it's a tube style compressor, it has a lot of warmth and a kind of a silky feel to it. Um, and that's kind of, if you're going for that kind of a sound um, and you really kind of, you want a bass that kind of sit in the pocket and just kind of feel right, nice and round and warm, an LA-2 style compressor or a tube based style compressor is a great choice. A Fairchild would be another great choice for bass. Um, so hopefully you guys can hear that. So that's all being done with just the the uh, the effects on the Studio Live 32. Can you guys hear that over? Uh, let's see. Uh, Ian says he's got to go. Uh, nice to see you again. Thanks for stopping by, man. I really appreciate it. We still got we got 61 people still watching. We've been on here almost two hours. You guys are freaking unbelievable, man. So that is our drums and kind of our bass kind of a, uh, let's, uh, you know, kind of a, a demonstration for tonight. Hopefully you guys can hear it well over YouTube. Sometimes I wonder, like I said, it's it's in mono and whatnot, and which is kind of a drag. So let me get back on camera two here. So you guys should see me now. Hey, how are you? And uh, again, thanks for watching. Let me get to the chat and see what you guys got going on. You have any questions, anything you want to know? Um, and then, oh, also what we talked about was, and you saw it earlier in the demonstration, now all the settings and everything that I did on the Studio Live 32 with the EQ compression settings and the fader settings, you would run the print track. Remember we talked earlier about now you would now print your mix from the top of the song to the bottom of the song. You'd play it in real time and whatever settings you have on the board is going to print to the mix in Studio One on the print track. And then what you would do is you would solo up the print track at the end, and that is the file that you would export out. And then everything you have on the Studio Live 32 is on your mix. That is the workaround until this becomes a full surface control. When this becomes a full surface control, 
different ball game because when you're moving faders on the board, it's going to move the faders in, in the DAW. And then when you save it, it's all going to save and it's all going to kind of work together. So when you save your Studio One session and close the session and shut down the board, and when you open that session up at a later time, it's got instant recall. Everything's going to come back. All your settings are going to come back, your EQ, your compression settings, your fader settings, your panning, your input, your, your the whole enchilada. But we're not there yet. So because of that, this is kind of a workaround, which is kind of a pain in the ass to be honest, but it works, you know, it works. It, but it, once, once the surface control happens, all that's going to go away. So what's going on in the chat guys, what's going on? And he said, it sounds smooth. How does it compare to the LA two a plugin? Um, oh, you mean the, the studio live 32 version LA two a similar. Um, the universal audio LA two a has a lot more color to it. I've noticed that the plugins, by Universal Audio, which is what I tend to have a, a, a better ear for, um, has a lot more uh, color than what this does. Um, but they're very similar sounding. So I'd say they did a pretty good job emulating an LA 2 way It sounds very similar. Uh, Perry says, to save, in studio, to save it in the studio live, would you create a scene? Yes, that's exactly what you would do. So you would create a scene, name that scene, and all your settings that I have for this mix would then be recallable. That, that's absolutely true. And you just want to make sure that all your faders in Studio One are set to Unity. Okay, I said that a little bit earlier, but in case you're coming late, you missed it. You don't want to use the faders in Studio One. You want to use the faders on the Studio Live 32. Okay, you want to set that up kind of beforehand, like we talked about earlier. Johnny says, hey, David, you forgot to take down your Christmas lights. No, Johnny, I didn't. <laughs> That's the way my studio looks 12 months out of the year. <laughs> hey, you shouldn't talk, man. I've seen your studio. You got lights everywhere. Not Christmas lights, but you got all kinds of lights. I leave them up. Uh, Perry says, understood. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Excellent. Let's see. Does the C... Uh, Jocko wants to know, does the CS18AI, uh, does that control the DAW? I believe it does, Johnny Gibe. You're the expert with that. You would tell me. I believe it does. I believe the CS uh, mixers uh, control Studio One as a surface control. I believe it does. Yes, Andy is saying yes, it does. What else is going on, guys? Any other questions you have? I don't know if Pete uh, Wojo is still floating around, um, but if he is, you know, if you guys have any questions about learning to mix and all the stuff we talked about earlier, um, feel free to ask. I'm here to answer those questions. Um, Anytime you guys want to ask. If not, you can always go back and watch the replay of this. Like I said, it will be in on YouTube by tomorrow morning. You can watch me go through the whole list of stuff and talking about the memberships and how that it's all going to be. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. So, yeah, this was pretty fun. The Studio Live 32, I'm getting more and more used to it. It is fantastic having real tactile feel uh, faders on the board, which is uh, much better than just using a mouse all the time. What other questions do we have in the chat? Anything else that we have going on in the chat? I should try to bring a, Hey, Johnny Lipsham, are you still floating around? You're probably in bed. It's probably four o'clock in the morning where you, <laughs> where you are at this point. I'm sorry that this took so long. I'd love to bring you up on Skype if you're around and you want to come out and say hi to all the people and all your new fans from your new MIDI drums made easy series that he created. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Perry says, this might be a stupid question. There's no such thing as a stupid question here, Perry. Uh, how do you set all the DAWs? How do you set them all? Um, well, oh, the quick and easy way is you just uh, highlight the first track, shift and highlight, click and highlight all your tracks. If you're on a Mac, hit the command button and click on the first fader cap and they'll all move to zero. If you're on a PC, I believe it's the Windows uh, key. Johnny Guy, if he's still around, he'll be able to tell me that. And this is one of the reasons why when we do live streams, just so you know, again, I don't know what Pete Wojo might have took, taken off. Um, when we do our live streams for learning to mix, it's not going to be done over YouTube. We're going to a live stream, not the to a live stream platform with uh, with a hosting company that that's all they do is live streaming. So we don't have these tech technical problems. Um, so when we do those webinars and we do live streams with learningtomix.com, it's not going to be done over YouTube. It's not going to be done over Facebook. It's going to be done through uh, a third party site where you'll log in with the username and password as a member to Learning to Mix, and you're going to log in and everything is seamless. We've already done a bunch of testing with this company so i know it's rock solid and they got great support so you don't have to worry about that it won't be kind of funky and jittery like it is here with youtube but again when you're doing live streams for free over youtube and it's a free service you really can't complain too much so 
sorry about that guys and sorry about that Johnny I know you wanted to I wanted to get you on here and talk and again sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't I don't know why so anyhow we've been on here two hours eight minutes and six seconds and counting and we have uh 53 people still here which is fantastic really cool do you guys have Anything else you guys want to talk about? Any questions? Anything we went over tonight that you want to ask about, whether it be through Studio One, the Studio Live 32, whether it be about training, whatever. What do you guys want to, what do you want to ask? What do you want to talk about? I'm here to answer all your questions and then we'll wrap it up pretty soon and then we'll do this again next month and maybe we'll do some more mixing. Maybe we'll take the same song and we'll mix the guitars and the vocals next time around if that's cool with everybody. Yeah, Jocko says that's the uh, yeah that's the trials of technology. It sure as hell is. I'll tell you. Sometimes you wonder, you know. You wonder, you wonder. You get all this great technology. It's all supposed to work, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but hey, at least the the stream itself didn't crash like it did earlier. Um, but what what are you gonna do? That's what you're gonna do. So what else is happening? How many people in here have a new Studio Live Series 3 mixer outside of myself? Anyone else in the chat and out of the 50-something people that are still here? Any of you have the Studio Live Series 3? Are you considering getting it? Um, and if you are, what, what are you going to get? The 16, the 24, the 32? I think the 24 just came out or it's about to come out. Perry's got a 32. Robert doesn't have one yet. Andy's not yet, but I know Andy. I think you're getting one soon, right? Filthy Curves at 24 channel on pre-order. Oh, cool. Okay, so the 24 is uh, ready to be pre-ordered. That's really cool. Perry says he's loving his. That's excellent. Uh, how are you using yours, Perry? Are you using? Are you doing kind of what we did here tonight? Are you routing Studio One back in and using the faders? Is that what you're doing? So the 24 is coming out in early June. Okay, that's cool. Where Robert says he can't afford it. Yeah, no, I know. It's an investment for sure. They're not cheap. That's for sure. That's for sure. But they're fun. It's a, it's a really nice board. The more I'm using it, the more I'm getting to like it. Um, Again, I'm, I'm really anxious to, to have it be a, a surface control. That's really what I'm really why I bought it. Yeah, Johnny said, "Is there? Yeah, there's a way to get Skype in the wire. There is a way to get Skype in the Wirecast. There is a way to do it. It's and we've done it one other time. It's just that for some reason tonight, I don't know if it has something to do with maybe maybe it's my internet on this side for tonight, which is usually kind of weird. I normally don't have internet issues, but I know um, YouTube was having problems tonight too. We we crashed the uh, the stream a couple of times already, um, so I'm not really sure. I gotta we gotta work some of that stuff out. I I mean I have to work some <laughs> some of that stuff out. So." Because I know you were on uh, Johnny's Facebook Live last week or so, and you were on through Skype, and he had you patched in pretty well. Uh, Andy wants to know if I recorded with the board yet. Yes, I've recorded um, a few band rehearsals in my studio with it, and it records really well. Uh, I did it to the SD card, and I also did it to Studio One simultaneously. Um, for me, the SD card's pretty cool, but it's you know if if you don't have a if you take this on the road and you don't have a computer available, the SD card is great. But when you have it in your studio, it's just as easy for me to pull it up in Studio One and then use my iPad from behind me where I kind of, you know, where my kind of position in the band is back there. And I just put my iPad with the Studio One app and I just control Studio One right from there. And I can pull up UC Surface and control the Studio Live uh, from there as well. So I don't even need to be in front of the mixer, which is really cool. Uh, and I just do it into Studio One. I don't really use anything that comes on the SD card. Um, I find that a little cumbersome to use the screen and stuff. But again, if you're in a club and you don't have another way to record because you don't have a laptop with you, it's a fantastic, you know, alternative for sure. So it's pretty cool. And it sounds great too. People have asked me about the preamps on this. How do they sound? They sound found they sound fantastic. Um, I don't I don't hear Really, to be honest with you, any difference from the preamps in this board that I heard out of my Universal Audio Apollo, if there's a difference, it's so 
minuscule. I, I really couldn't hear any difference. I think they sound great. So I believe it's the same preamp that's in the Studio 192, if I, re if I remember reading that correctly. So it does sound, the preamps sound great on this board. It really does. Perry says you're using, yeah, you're just using uh, Studio One, not the SD card yet. Yeah, well, you know, if you're doing a live gig, if you're doing a paid recording session, <laughs> um, you can do both, you know, because you have a backup. So if you, if you have a computer hooked up and the computer crashes or whatnot, you always have it on the SD card, um, which is a nice way to have, a you know, kind of a dual system there in case you have a, a technology failure, um, much like we had tonight with the live stream, right? So, I mean, things do happen. So it's really cool. Anybody else? Any other questions? We've been in here almost two hours, 15 minutes or so and counting. Going to try to wrap it up pretty soon. Let's see. Perry wants to know, Dave, are you running a network for monitoring quick mix yet or just recorded just for? No, not yet. No, I'm not running. I'm not running um, anything through. The, the only thing I have plugged in for the network cable is so I can use UC Surface. <laughs> and I am doing that. Excuse me. So yeah, so I am doing it that way. I have a I have the Cat5 cable plugged into my router, and that allows me to access UC Surface, uh, which is which is nice to be able to you know sit behind the drum kit and you know and, and set levels and not you know do it right from the iPad. It's actually really nice. It's really nice. It's very convenient for sure. Let's see what else we got going on here in the chat. Still got 20 people hanging around, which is really cool. Uh, Johnny, yes, I can see your comments, but they they were whipping kind of fast. Did I miss something that you asked me? If I, if I did, um, I apologize. What, what did you have, my friend? I was seeing your comments earlier, though. I did talk about your um, Johnny Guy in his um, Loops Made Easy series. We talked about earlier, Johnny, before you may have stopped in. Um, if people weren't, if people joined late, we talked a couple hours ago about Johnny Lipsham and Johnny Guy, um, who's also now creating um, a Loops Made Easy uh, product for home recording made easy. And that should be done in, I don't know, four to six weeks, Johnny, somewhere in that ballpark, last time we talked. Um, and that'll be coming soon. And Johnny's going to be giving us uh, all. Uh, an education on loops and a million ways to use them and create them and writing songs and slicing and dicing and doing everything you want to do with loops. He's going to put together a wonderful series on how to do that. Um, and that is coming soon. And I'm really excited to see that product when it's done. I'm going to be watching it for sure. Oh yeah. Johnny was confirming that the 192 pre is for the 32. Yeah. So the studio 192, the preamps that are in that, I think it's called the I don't know the proper term, the max preamps. I don't, I think it's that I'm not sure, but they are the same preamps that are in the studio live series three mixers. Um, and they do, they sound great. And I've compared the studio 192 to the universal audio Apollo head to head, side by side in my studio. And they're identical. So that would mean that the preamps in this board are as good as the Apollo preamps. And, and I do believe that I, there is no noticeable difference that I can hear between them. And I did a lot of testing with the Studio 192 and the Apollo. And they are as close as close can be. Um, so they do really sound good. The X-Max preamp. That's right. The A-Max, X-Max, right. X-Max preamp. That's the right name for it. The X-Max preamp are the preamps that are in this board. On the 32, the 24, and the 16. Anything else, guys? If not, we are going to wrap it up. We talked about a lot of stuff tonight, and I don't think I missed anything. I think I went through everything. I, again, I apologize we couldn't get Skype working. We will try to get that figured out for the next time. Um, and then the next time, next month, we'll... We'll take that same song and we'll mix uh, guitars, vocals, and then we'll put it all together um, and we'll add some more plugins and we'll do some more stuff with the different EQs, the vintage style EQs, maybe on the Studio Live 32. And we'll use some compression on the Studio Live 32 as well. Um, we'll do that next time around. Uh, Perry, thanks, Dave, again for this live session. Looking forward to it all month. That's great, Perry. Thanks so much. 
I've seen a lot of guys out there on the internet and you're one of the best. Oh, you're great. Thank Perry. Thank you so much for the kind words. Again, if you have not, um, and again, everyone here knows Johnny Guy. If you don't know Johnny Guy, then you're, then you're living under a rock if you don't know Johnny Guy. Go out to Home Studio Trainer. Check out Johnny Guy. Johnny's always doing live broadcasts and a lot of live streams, but he does stuff more on Facebook than more YouTube. So go check out what he's got going on. Make sure you're checking out Johnny Lipsham and all the stuff he has going on. Um, if you like kind of jo and Johnny uh, Lipsham, pr uh, plug your EP, the name of your EP again, because I forget the name of it. But if you like jazz and kind of that Steely Dan kind of a vibe, Johnny's got some great music over on his website. Go check it out and check out MIDI Drums Made Easy. Um, and make sure you also check out Johnny Guybe once again. And Johnny, Johnny and Johnny, Johnny Guybe especially. Thanks for stopping by, Johnny. I really do appreciate you taking time. I know it's late for you and you're up late as well. Uh, Andy says, thanks, David. For one of these days, you'll be up early for the coffee. And man, you get up. Oh, yeah, the coffee is in question. You know, funny thing, um, the, the Andy, the, the questions and coffee segments that I do, that, that was really kind of... Um, I, I can't believe how popular that the for people who don't know once or twice a week. Now I could do one every day, but I don't try to do too many in a row because people get tired of them. But um, I get so many questions that come in through comments, through uh, YouTube, through email and such. Um, and I can't possibly answer them all in email anymore. So I started putting together these little short, you know, less than 10 minute videos usually uh, called questions and coffee with David first thing in the morning, because my first two hours of every day, and a lot of people don't believe this, and I'm up at about quarter to four every single morning. Um, and the first two hours or so of my day is literally doing administra administrative business stuff, answering emails, the Facebook thing, YouTube posts, all that stuff. And I'm doing it in my home office. I'm rolling out of bed. I don't even have my glasses on. My hair's a mess. And um, I'm walking, you know, I'm working in my pajamas pretty much, and um, I'm answering emails. And I decided that I could not possibly um, answer them all in an email anymore because it would just take too long. So I started just putting my little GoPro and just answered them on video. And I can barely talk. My voice is usually all hoarse at that time of the morning, and, you know, I don't look the best. Uh, and so um, I did it. I said I'll answer a few, and I'll just, you know, get get you guys your, your answers to your questions because I don't want you to have to wait too long. And lo and behold, I did the first two questions in coffee and now I get people asking me about it and I get more and more questions and it's turning into one of my more popular videos, which is hilarious to me, but people seem to really like it and they're, they're, they're glad that I'm able to explain some of the answers in video format that you just can't always do an email. Um, and so now we have the questions in coffee with David and yes, Andy, they're at like three in the morning, four in the morning, literally that early. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll get up one morning. You could join me, uh, live for a questions and coffee with David segment. But uh, yeah, a lot of people seem to like it. And I urge you to keep sending all your questions into info at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And your question will be featured on an upcoming episode of Questions and Coffee with David. I already have, I think, five or six already made that are going to be going up to YouTube over the next two weeks, every few days. And I have some other videos coming up as well. So but I'd love to see you, Andy, at that time of the morning, if you happen to be up. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah, Johnny Lipsham says his EP, his EP is called Belonging to Tomorrow. Great EP. Love. If you like that Steely Dan kind of jazz thing, love it. Go check it out. Filthy Curve wants to know how we can hear the EP. Go out to Johnny Lipsham's website or Johnny Lipsham Studios. Just Google it. You'll find Johnny, put your link in the chat, would you? So people can go buy your EP. Oh, the chat won't allow web links. Okay, so Google Johnny Lipsham Studios and you'll find him and go get his EP. It's really good. Andy says it's three, it's three year time now. Yeah. See. <laughs> cool. So do we have anything else, guys? If not, we're gonna wrap it up. It's almost two and a half hours. Uh, and I have to, uh, like I said, I have to get up at four o'clock in the morning and record videos. So I need to get to bed myself again. Thanks so much for, uh, for, for hanging out, for joining me, for playing around with the mix and listening to me tell you about all the stuff that's coming up again for more, uh, you know, uh, any other questions you have, send them in, leave comments below. I will get back to you and, uh, be on the lookout for learning to mix.com. It's coming over the next couple of weeks and there'll be some videos promoting that. Uh, until the next time. Again, thanks so much. And Johnny, uh, Guy, thank you for joining in, man. I really do appreciate it. And I will uh, see you all, you guys, uh, next time. We'll do another live stream, 
third, fourth week of uh, May. You'll see the uh, the invite on Facebook, and you'll see uh, the uh, stuff coming out in email, and we'll, we'll do this again. Okay, so thanks, guys. I really do appreciate it, and I will talk to you guys all soon. Take care.